The Space Trilogy or Cosmic Trilogy is a series of science fiction novels by C.S. Lewis, famous for his later series The Chronicles of Narnia. A philologist named Elwyn Ransom is the hero of the first two novels and an important character in the third. Contents <laughs> 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 Topic. Summary The books in the trilogy are Out of the Silent Planet 1938, set mostly on Mars Malacandra. In this book, Elwyn Ransom voyages to Mars and discovers that Earth is exiled from the rest of the solar system. Far back in Earth's past, it fell to an angelic being known as the Bentayasa, and now, to prevent contamination of the rest of the solar system, the Field of Arbol, it is known as the Silent Planet, Fulcandra. Perilandra, 1943, set mostly on Venus, also known as Voyage to Venus. Here Dr. Ransom journeys to an unspoiled Venus in which the first humanoids have just emerged. That Hideous Strength 1945, set on Earth. A scientific think tank called the NICE the National Institute of Coordinated Experiments is secretly in touch with demonic entities who plan to ravage and lay waste to planet Earth. In 1946, the publishing house Avon now an imprint of HarperCollins published a version of That Hideous Strength specially abridged by C.S. Lewis entitled The Tortured Planet. Topic. Publication history Lewis, C.S. Out of the Silent Planet. London, The Bodley Head, 1938. Lewis, C.S. Perilandra, a novel. London, The Bodley Head, 1943. Lewis, C.S. That Hideous Strength, a modern fairy tale for grown-ups. London, The Bodley Head, 1945. Lewis, C.S. The Dark Tower and Other Stories. Walter Hooper, ed. London, Collins, 1977. Topic: The Dark Tower. An unfinished manuscript published posthumously in 1977, named The Dark Tower by Walter Hooper, its editor, features Elwyn Ransom in a less central role as involved with an experiment that allows its participants to view on a special screen their own location in a parallel universe. Its authenticity was impeached by Lewis scholar Catherine Linskoog in her scholarly criticism of Walter Hooper, but in 2003 Alistair Fowler established its authenticity when he wrote in the Yale Review that he saw Lewis writing the manuscript that would be subsequently published as The Dark Tower, heard him reading it, and discussed it with him. Topic: <laughs> Influences and Approach. Lewis stated in a letter to Roger Lancelin Green, What immediately spurred me to write was Olaf Stapledon's Last and First Men, and an essay in J.B.S. Haldane's Possible Worlds both of which ick seemed to take the idea of such space travel seriously and to have the desperately immoral outlook W.H. Ick I try to pillory in Western. I like the whole interplanetary ideas as a mythology and simply wish to conquer for my own Christian p oin t of view what has always hitherto been used by the opposite side. I think H. G. Wells's First Men in the Moon the best of the sort I have read. The other main literary influence was David Lindsay's A Voyage to Arcturus 1920. The real father of my planet books is David Lindsay's A Voyage to Arcturus, which you also will revel in if you don't know it. I had grown up on Wells's stories of that kind, it was Lindsay who first gave me the idea that the scientifiction appeal could be combined with the supernatural appeal. The books are not especially concerned with technological speculation, and in many ways read like fantasy adventures combined with themes of biblical history and classical mythology. 
Like most of Lewis's mature writing, they contain much discussion of contemporary rights and wrongs, similar in outlook to Madeleine Lengel's Kairos series. Many of the names in the trilogy reflect the influence of Lewis's friend J. R. R. Tolkien's Elvish languages. Topic Setting Topic Ransom Ransom appears very similar to Lewis himself, a university professor, expert in languages and medieval literature, unmarried Lewis did not marry until his fifties, wounded in World War I and with no living relatives except for one sibling. Lewis, however, apparently intended for Ransom to be partially patterned after his friend and fellow Oxford professor J. R. R. Tolkien, since Lewis is presented as novelizing Ransom's reminiscences in the epilogue of Out of the Silent Planet and is a character narrator in the frame tale for Perilandra. In that hideous strength Ransom, with his royal charisma and casual acceptance of the supernatural, appears more like Charles Williams or some of the heroes in Williams's books. In Out of the Silent Planet it is suggested that Ransom is not the character's real name but merely an alias for a respectable professor whose reputation might suffer from his recounting such a journey to the planet Mars. In the following books, however, this is unaccountably dropped and it is made clear that Ransom is the character's true name. As befits a philologist, he provides an etymology, the name does not derive from the modern word, ransom, but rather is a contraction of the Old English for, Ranulf's son. This may be another allusion to Tolkien, a professor of Old English. Topic. Cosmology Ransom gets much information on cosmology from the Ayasa presiding angel of Malacandra, or Mars. Meleldal, the son of the Old One, ruled the field of Arbol, or solar system, directly. But then the Bent One the Ayasa of Earth rebelled against Meleldal and all the Eldalar much as Morgoth rebelled against Eru and the other Valar in Tolkien's Silmarillion of Deep Heaven outer space. In response to this act, the Bent One suffered confinement on Earth where he first inflicted great evil. Thus he made Earth a silent planet, cut off from the Oyeresu of other planets, hence the name, Thulkandra, the silent planet, which is known throughout the universe. Meleldal tried to reach out to Thulkandra and became a man to save the human race. According to the Green Lady, Tinedral, mother of Perilandra, or Venus, Thulkandra is favored among all the worlds, because Meleldal came to it to become a man. In the field of Arbol, the outer planets are older, the inner planets newer. Earth will remain a silent planet until the end of the great siege of deep heaven against the Ayasa of Earth. The siege starts to end with the Oyeresu of other worlds descending to Earth at the finale of the trilogy, that hideous strength. But there is still much to happen until the fulfillment of what is predicted in the Book of Revelation, when the Oyeresu put an end to the rule of the Bent Eldal and, on the way, smash the moon to fragments. This, in turn, will not be the end of the world, but merely the very beginning of what is still to come. Topic. Eldalar The Eldalar singular Eldal are superhuman extraterrestrials. The human characters in the trilogy encounter them on various planets, but the Eldalar themselves are native to interplanetary and interstellar space. Deep heaven. They are barely visible as pillars of faint, shifting light. Certain very powerful Eldalar, the Oyeresu singular Ayasa, control the course of nature on each of the planets of the solar system similar to the Valar in the Silmarillion. They and maybe all the Eldalar, can manifest in corporeal forms. The title Ayasa seems to indicate the function of leadership, regardless of the leader's species. When the Perilandran human Tor assumes rule of his world, he styles himself Tor Ayasa Perilendri. Presumably, Tor, ruler of Perilandra. 
The Elder are science fictionalized depictions of angels, immortal and holy, with the Oyeresu perhaps being angels of a higher order. As Lewis implies in Chapter 22 of Out of the Silent Planet, the name Ayasa was suggested by Ayasas, the name given in Bernard Silvestris's Cosmographia to the governors of the celestial spheres. Bernard's word was almost certainly a corruption or a deliberate alteration of Greek Uzarashes. Lords of Being, used with the same meaning in the Hermetic Asclepius, the Eldalar resident on actually, imprisoned in Earth are Dark Eldalar, fallen angels or demons. The Ayasa of Earth, the Bent One, is Satan. Ransom later meets the Oyeresu of both Mars and Venus, who are described as being masculine but not actually male, and feminine but not actually female, respectively. The Oyeresu of other worlds have characteristics like those of the corresponding classical gods, for instance, the Ayasa of Jupiter gives a feeling of merriment joviality. <laughs> HNAU HNAU is a word in the Old Solar language which refers to rational animals, such as humans. In the book, the old solar speaker specifies that God is not HNAU, and is unsure whether Eldalar immortal angelic beings can be termed HNAU, deciding that if they are HNAU, they are a different kind of HNAU than humans or Martians. The term was adopted by some other people, including Lewis's friend J. R. R. Tolkien, who used the term in his unpublished during his lifetime. The Notion Club papers, distinguishing HNAU from beings of pure spirit or spirits able to assume a body which is not essential to their nature. Similarly, a character in James Blish's science fiction novel A Case of Conscience wonders whether a particular alien is a HNAU, which he defines as having a rational soul. In recent times the term has been used by some philosophers, for example in Thomas I. White's is a dolphin a person? Where he asks if dolphins are persons, and if such, if they can also be reckoned as HNAU, that is sentient beings of the same level as humans. Other uses of the term include the term as used by some Christians, here as with Tolkien's use of the term, HNAU, refers to sentient beings possessing independent will, and thus by extension a soul. Topic. Old Solar Language According to the Space Trilogy's cosmology, the speech of all the inhabitants of the field of Arbol is the Old Solar or HLAB Erebol F. Cordy. Only Earth lost the language, due to the Bent One's influence. Old Solar can be likened to the Elvish languages invented by Lewis's friend, Tolkien. The grammar is little known, except for the plurals of nouns. The plurals of some words H -R -O -S -S, eldal, are simple, only adding a final or, or i, others as for ayasa, sorn, nakra, are quite complex broken plurals, adding an internal a, and adding or altering a final vowel usually to i or u, and may also include internal metathesis oyeresu, seroni, hierarchy. Terms used throughout the trilogy eldal, place. Eldala, an everlasting, rational, multidimensional energy being, that is not organic, an angel. Some act in the capacity of Ayasa, of a planet. Field of Arbol, the solar system. Glund or Glundandra, Jupiter. HNAU or now a rational being, capable of speech, intellect, and personhood, and containing a soul. Handra — a planet or land Ru — blood Lurga — Saturn Malakandra — Mars Maleldal — the Christian god, described in Perilandra as having been incarnated as Jesus. Nereval — Hapax Legomenon in Perilandra and, from context, apparently Uranus Ayasa — place. Oyeresu — title Ruler of a planet, a higher order angel, perhaps an archangel. Perilandra 
Venus Sulva — the Moon Thulcandra — Earth, literally, the silent planet Veritrilbia — Mercury Topic: Parallels and adaptations. Topic: <laughs> Other written works. The cosmology of all three books, in which the Oyeresu of Mars and Venus somewhat resemble the corresponding gods from classical mythology, derives from Lewis's interest in medieval beliefs. Lewis discusses these in his book The Discarded Image published much later than the Ransom Trilogy. Lewis was intrigued with the ways medieval authors borrowed concepts from pre-Christian religion and science and attempted to reconcile them with Christianity, and with the lack of a clear distinction between natural and supernatural phenomena in medieval thought. The Space Trilogy also plays on themes in Lewis's essay, Religion and Rocketry which argues that as long as humanity remains flawed and sinful, our exploration of other planets will tend to do them more harm than good. Furthermore, much of the substance of the argument between Ransom and Weston in Perilandra is found in Lewis's book Miracles. Links between Lewis's space trilogy and his other writings are discussed at great length in Michael Ward's Planet Narnia and in Catherine Lindskoog's C.S. Lewis, Mere Christian, J.R.R. Tolkien was a friend and sometime mentor to Lewis. In that hideous strength, Lewis alludes several times to Tolkien's Atlantean civilization Numena, spelt Numena by Tolkien, saying in the foreword, "Those who would like to learn further about Numena and the true West must, alas, await the publication of much that still exists only in the MSS of my friend, Professor J. R. R. Tolkien." Villains in both Tolkien's Lord of the Rings cycle and here are very hostile toward the natural world, specifically in the wanton destruction of trees in Tolkien's and the manipulation population of life in Lewis's. Stephen R. Lawhead's Song of Albion trilogy contains numerous references to and parallels to the Space Trilogy. The main character is an Oxford student whose first name is Lewis. The books combine themes of Christianity and pre-Christian mythology, while the plot involves materialistic endeavors to gain access to forbidden worlds for material gain. There is also a minor villain named Weston. John C. Wright's War of the Dreaming Duology also references the Space Trilogy, with Sulva as a name for the Moon and references to fallen planetary angels. Arthur C. Clarke's three science fiction novels The Sands of Mars, Earthlight, and Islands in the Sky have been published together as the Space Trilogy in 2001, but have no connection to the works of Lewis, and are in fact only loosely connected to each other. Popular music Christian horror punk band Blaster the Rocket Man, whose lyrics frequently subsist on monster themes, borrowed heavily from the Space Trilogy in their album The Monster Who Ate Jesus. Their song, Ransom vs. The Unman, is a direct retelling of the struggle between Ransom and the Unman in Perilandra. The very next song, entitled March of the Macrobes alludes to the NICE. Institute's attempts to disembody the heads of those who wish to gain immortality with lines such as, Leave flesh behind, there's only mind, or set the brain apart, to elevate the heart, whatever happened to the individual. NICE, where is his soul? RAPE. Lastly, Tundra time on Thulcandra is a tribute to Out of the Silent Planet, with an allusion to the planet Perilandra as well. Malacandra on my mind, Perilandra all the time, never mind it's tundra, it's tundra time. Becoming the Archetype, a Christian progressive death metal band, produced an album titled Dichotomy which was inspired by the Space Trilogy. The album explores themes that are prevalent in the trilogy, biology versus technology and man versus machine, Circle of Dust, a Christian industrial band, reference the Space Trilogy on Disengage, an album which includes two instrumental tracks named Thulcandra and Perilandra. 
The band's 2016 album Machines of Our Disgrace features a track named Malacandra. Progressive rock band Glasshammer have based the concept of their album Perilandra on the stories of the Space Trilogy and the Chronicles of Narnia. The Christian band Massive Avid has two songs that contain quotes from that hideous strength. Progressive hard rock band King's X titled their first album Out of the Silent Planet and included a song of the same name on their second album, Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. German progressive rock band Eden titled their second album Perilandra. Iron Maiden recorded a song called, Out of the Silent Planet, on their album Brave New World. Hip hop artist and singer songwriter Heath McNeese has a song titled, Perilandra, on his C.S. Lewis tribute album, The Weight of Glory. A Christian metalcore band is named Silent Planet, after the first book of the trilogy. They currently have one full-length LP and two EPs. Space music composer Kevin Brahini, on his album The Way Home, has a track named, Perilandra. <laughs> Notes <laughs>